President Mohamed Buhari is in Belgium for the sixth European Union African Summit in Brussels, Belgium, to find out what is in it for Nigeria and Nigerians. And situation in Ocean State, People's Democratic Party is degenerating and tension rises over plans towards Congresses and governorship primary. Hello everyone, welcome to the program. This is Politics Today live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Wakimbale in Abuja. Let's uh, continue with our countdown, looking ahead to what President Mohamed Buhari will make of the electoral bill that is being retransmitted to him. It's now 17 days since the National Assembly re-amended, passed, and again transmitted the electoral bill to President Buhari for his assent. This comes after he has first rejected it, but he told Channel Television in an exclusive interview that he will sign the bill should the National Assembly fix all the gray areas he pointed out to them. And so the nation now awaits eagerly the president's assent and hoping that he will keep to his promise of signing the bill. Let's begin tonight by telling you that the National Bureau of Statistics expects the nation's gross domestic product, GDP, as, as at the fourth quarter of 2021 at 3.9%, sustaining a, po a positive trajectory. The Statistician General of the Federation, Mr. Simon Harry, who was speaking at a news conference in Abuja today, explains that the annual gross domestic product growth rate stood at 3.4 percent while the aggregate gdp came to 49.2 trillion naira compared to the for the 3.2 trillion naira gained in the fourth quarter of 2020. it's the fastest growing sector during uh, the fourth quarter according to statistician general includes transportation coal mining and the metal or subsectors take a listen to him the improvement been seen in the output growth. In the last five quarters, the field's steady progress made in stemming the COVID-19 pandemic and the associated negative impact on the livelihood, the well-being, and the economy generally. Globally, many countries have witnessed an improvement in economic performances compared to 2022, when COVID-19 was so endemic. And so, as economic recovery is a gradual process that requires consistent collective efforts to improve economic activities across the institutional sectors, such as the household, the non-profit institutions serving households, the financial uh, corporations, the non-financial corporations, and the government. However, in Nigeria, the prospects of consolidating the recovery is glaring considering the improved economic performances over these periods of time. Well, there's so much to talk about. When the president, Mohamed Bari, travels out of Nigeria, there's a lot to expect. He's going to be having meetings on the sidelines of the Brussels conference. But what is the need for Nigeria? When the president travels, of course, there should be benefit for Nigeria. What are the focus of what he went for, really, with his entourage? We'll find out tonight the gains and some of the details of President Buhari's trip to Brussels. But first, let's serve you with some of your political roundup stories. The federal government has stated that the challenge of out-of-school children is national and not only a northeast problem. This was disclosed by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Disaster Management, Sadia Umar Farouk, during the weekly ministerial briefing at the State House. The minister explains that a survey conducted across the country through the coordinator of the National Social Investment Program, Dr. Umar Binder, reveals that in the Makoko area of Lagos alone, there are 7,000 out-of-school children. The Zamfara State High Court has adjourned the suit filed by Senator Kabiru Marafa against the ruling All Progressives Congress to March the 14th for further mention. 
Senator Marafa is challenging the illegality and exclusion of members of his faction from participating in the state congresses of the APC after they had purchased forms. The presiding judge, Justice Bill Kucheri, after listening to both parties, adjourned the case to March 14th for extension of time for the defendants to adopt counter affidavits and written addresses and for the plaintiff to present preliminary objections. The lead counsel to the plaintiff, John Shaka, said the National Working Committee of the APC, state, local government and ward levels in Zamfara State are illegal and unlawful. The Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, has insisted that the House resolution to investigate the state of Nigerian prisons under the Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbashala, has nothing to do with the APC leader, Bala Tinubu. He was reacting to a matter of privilege raised by Representative Onofiok Luke, who was furious with reports suggesting that the House resolution on Wednesday to investigate the state of the Nigerian Correctional Service was a political move by the Speaker against the Minister of Interior, Rauf Aregbashala. Some members of the People's Democratic Party in Oshun State have called on the National Working Committee of the party to reconstitute the Electoral Committee that will supervise the emergence of the party's delegates for next month's primary election. They also want Governor Umar of Interior of Adamawa State and Governor Shahi Makidi of Oyo State to steer clear of the affairs of the party for peace to reign. The People's Democratic Party in Oshun have elected three ad hoc delegates from each of the 332 wards on Wednesday ahead of its primary election slated for March the 7th, but for the court judgment in Ife. The National Secretariat of the party had appointed a five-man electoral committee to oversee the affairs. On Thursday, some members of the party loyal to Senator Demola Dileke staged a peaceful calling on the PDP-NWC to reconstitute another committee. They also said in reconstituting the committee, Governor Omar of Interior of Adamawa State and Governor Shahi Makide of Oyo State should be excluded. The Katsina state government has commenced payment of compensation to some 365 people already affected by the ongoing construction of the Katsina on the Pass Bridge project. No fewer than 365 people, mostly petty traders, have been identified and selected to collect compensation from the Katsina state government over the ongoing construction of the Kofar Kaura on the Pass Bridge project. The State Standing Committee on Land Verification and Compensation Payment under the Governor's Office, led by the Secretary to the State Government, Dr. Mustafa Inua, said while presenting checks to the beneficiaries that government is paying the sum of 133,475,000 naira to cover the affected people. Thank you so much, everyone, for sharing with us right on the program. There are a few other stories that you need to know. Let's tell you that a coalition of civil society organizations in Oshun State is condemning the Minister for Interior, Raoul Farag Beshola, over his uh, alleged recent outburst on the political situation in the state. Uh, speaking today at the news conference in Abuja, the leader of the coalition describes the outburst as a show of rascality which is capable of destabilizing the polity in Oshun State. The group is also calling on President Muhammad Buhari to call the minister to order and asking the minister to focus on his job as the Minister of Interior. Take a listen to the spokesperson of the, of the group. Mr. Ralf Arikbashala, in the past one week, has engaged in public shows of rascality, encouragement of followers to behave in manners that undermine good governance, and conduct himself in manners likely to cause disaffection in the state. The integration of elder state men among others. We reckon that a public officer expects to act in manners that promote public security, but who is in making utterances that can encourage violence, insubordination, and disrespect to constitutional authority is acting a script that can only promote disunity, acrimony, and arrest. We state unequivocally that recent utterances of the Minister of Interior are today eating the polity in Osun State to the point where residents now fear for their lives. Well, the minister, Ralph Arabishala, has been responding to this matter. There was a statement from his office about these allegations. The media advisor to the minister uh, today says, there is a sinister plot by an array of one-man pseudo non-governmental organization hurriedly put together and plotted by the leadership of the state government in Oshun State. And according to the minister, the agenda is to precipitate crisis, 
course chaos in Oshun and destroy the APC governorship primary election they are poised to lose. The Minister of his went further to allege that the plan of the group uh, is ultimately uh, whom uh, hope to heap the blame on the Minister of Interior Ralph Aregbeshola and call to question his integrity and leadership capacity. Take a look at some part of the statement from the minister. He says it is on record that one day that while returning from a well-attended political sensitization rally in Elisha, known hoodlums attacked the convoy of the minister as they approached the popular old garage junction in Oshobo. His convoy compri comprising of well-trained officers of the Department of State Security, the Nigerian police force charged with protecting the minister and other security personnel drawn from the paramilitary services, professionally responded to the daring attackers who were armed with diverse sophisticated weapons. Having failed to achieve their mission of killing the minister on Monday, the sponsors of the evil plot have now resorted to smearing his name, hoping to achieve through the back door what they cannot get fairly on the field, end of quote. That is a statement from the office of the minister. Let's tell you what happened today regarding the APC in Kano State, where a three-member panel of the Court of Appeal, Abuja Division, presided by Justice Haruna Zamani, has set aside a judgment of the FCTI Court filed over the 2021 World and Local Government Congresses for lack of jurisdiction. The court quashed the lower court judgment, which gave Senator Ibrahim Shakaro's G7 faction of the APC in Kano victory over the faction led by the state governor, Abdullah Omar Ganduje. Upholding the appeal filed by the Ganduje-led faction of the Kano All Progressive Congress, the appellate court held that the high court lacked the jurisdiction to try the case. The Shakara led faction had approached the FCT High Court, Abuja, shortly after the APC Congresses in Kano, during which the court upheld the group's Congresses as, again that, as against that of the Governor Ganduje led side. Dissatisfied with the High Court ruling, Ganduje's group headed to the Appeal Court to contest the ruling. Also in its ruling, the Appellate Court held that the case was not a pre election matter but an internal matter of the ruling party and therefore should be decided by the leadership of APC. Everyone, let's get started with our part of our uh, main conversation for tonight. I'll later on take you to Austin State in a crisis rocking the People's Democratic Party. But let's touch base with Brussels in Belgium. The story is around President Mohamed Abouari Streep, uh, who is being uh, away from Nigeria for about two days now. The president is in Brussels for the sixth European Union African summit in Brussels, Belgium. The summit, which holds from the 17th of February to the 18th, and will have the participants deliberate on themes currently affecting the world, the president will use the opportunity of the meeting to have other bilateral engagements. The president will be accompanied on the trip by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Jaffrey Onyema, Minister of Health, Dr. Osage Hanire, Minister of State for the Environment, Sharon Ekazo, the National Security Advisor, Major General Babangana Mogunu, the Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, Ambassador Ahmed Rufai Abubaka, and the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Diaspora Commission, Honorable Abike Dabiri Erawa, who will also be part of the entourage. We understand that the President is suspected back in the country on Saturday. Let's now get a sense of the activities of the president in details at a conference and what is the need for Nigeria, including some of the sidelined engagement and the bilateral talks. I'm being joined from Brussels by the president's special assistant on media and publicity, Mr. Garaba Show. Thank you so much, Mr. Show, for joining us tonight. Let's begin first and foremost. When is the president expected to speak? Is he scheduled to speak on the sideline? And what is the focus of his speech to the conference? Well, um, asking about the sideline meetings outside the main conference, the president started earlier today with the meeting on Ethiopia. You know, there's a big crisis there. And uh, at the last meeting of the African Union, four leaders, including President Obasanjo and the Senegal, was added to make to the fifth. They were mandated to uh, intercede on behalf of the 
African Union on the matter. So they had an early meeting. And uh, in addition to that, of course, or record about eight other heads of state uh, had indicated their wish uh, to sit down and talk uh, with the president in bilateral meetings. These meetings are still ongoing and uh, uh, will continue until the end of today and possibly tomorrow. Okay, uh, so those are the bilateral meetings. Uh, uh, first, before I go into the bilateral meetings, because those are the sidelines engagement scheduled for the president, I was talking about the main event and the appearance of President Buhari at the conference. Is he scheduled to speak and what will be the focus of his speech to the conference? Well, the, the structure of the meeting this uh, time around is different from what they used to have before. In the past, they had uh, big plenary meetings at which uh, individual leaders were called, uh, you know, to speak. Uh, and the president uh, is in readiness for that. However, uh, this time around, uh, the meetings have been structured around seven thematic round tables, seven thematic round tables, and uh, each round table is supposed to be chaired by one or two African leaders, one or two European leaders, they co-chair this meeting. And uh, in the case of Nigeria, so leaders are supposed to make their choices as to which round tables they would preside at. And in the case of President Mahmoud Buhari, he has chosen two, one on the issue of peace, security, and good governance. These are some of the existential challenges facing our own country. So security, peace, and good governance are key, and he has chosen that. And the other one, of course, is on health systems and vaccine production on the continent. You know that uh, the Europeans have put aside a huge sum of money to start vaccine manufacturing in uh, production in, on the continent. And curiously, the Nigerian uh, was missing from the initial list of four countries chosen. Curious because one out of every five Africans is a Nigerian. So even for the market of the vaccines in Nigeria, Nigeria should have been considered. And so President Muhammad Buhari chose to be in that uh, round table in order to push the case for Nigeria uh, so, uh, uh, so that uh, they would also commit to establishing uh, that manufacturing facility in Nigeria. We have suffered a lot of uh, from vaccinationalism over this period of time. And we know how much trouble it took for us to so procure supplies from the, especially from the early beginning. So yes, we need to have uh, something going on in our country. I know part of uh, the conversations and the meeting engagements that the president will be having is about sustaining peace, financing uh, sustainable and uh, uh, growth in the economy, and the issues of climate change and energy. Uh, I'm particularly concerned about two major ones here, security and energy. But let me go to energy. This is perhaps the issue of power is a major problem here uh, in Nigeria. We have what it takes to be able to fire homes and uh, industries with necessary power supply and electricity. But unfortunately, it does look in the last 30 years or more, Nigeria has not been able or capable of uh, giving its citizens uh, electricity that they deserve as part of the things that the government of President Muhammad Buhari has promised. Now, if that kind of conversation is coming up in Brussels, what exactly is the focus? I know that is a Siemens deal that was signed by the federal government with uh, that German organization. But what has become of it? Because we've not been able to go beyond a certain ceiling of uh, electricity supply in Nigeria a sad, sad story that several administrations in this country has been unable uh, to overcome. What is the good news as far as energy supply for Nigeria is concerned at that conference? Well, yeah, energy is um, yet another big issue 
renewable energy because as you can see the world is moving away from fuel uh, fossil fuel energy uh, uh, which had been the mainstay for many countries uh, nigeria will do a bit of coal and uh, and the gas we are just getting into that one uh, and, and as you know that uh, we currently are faced with the challenges uh, coming from this particular europeans and other nations uh, wanting to cast gas uh, along with with the with the with, with, the, with coal uh, as being unsafe impure energies in fact they're already asking their banks not to put money into gas energy so uh, here are some of the things that the president is talking uh, to leaders uh, of european countries is that is that we need gas as a transition energy for our country in order that we also do more to contribute you know to the negation of the climate change effect if we don't do gas now in the country then we'll be cutting the trees and and the body and which exposes the land the country to even bigger hazards dealing with climate change than otherwise would have been the case so a lot of that is going on in terms of uh, the ongoing proposition well, Mr. Shewu, in specific, if you can tell Nigerians now, what would be good news to their ears? Uh, the issue of environment is important. Cutting down trees, a lot of those stuff uh, are the issues that, in fact, have uh, gained the attention of uh, global leaders and uh, have taken a global dimension. But, I mean, does that really concern an average Nigerian who does not have light, as we speak right now? A lot of Nigerians, millions of them, who are firing their generators, buying fuel that they have queued up for several days to fire their generator tonight to watch us as you speak to us from Brussels tonight. Not a good story for Nigeria, but the question is, what in specific can you tell us that the president might come up with as agreement or engagement that can better the lot of Nigerians in terms of the electricity that goes into their homes? If you please don't mind, can you repeat that question because uh, this, you are on end of the signal is breaking. And I'm not able to get uh, the first time. So the question I was asking is that the issue of uh, environmental issues are very important. Climate change, very important. Don't cut down trees, very important. But I'm saying that for an average Nigerian is the fact that they need power, electricity. Several promises have been made. But now that we understand that the issue of energy is going to be discussed, Nigerians want to know in details. Millions of them who are firing um, their generators tonight uh, from few that they've queued up several days to buy, and now watching us and watching you speak to Nigerians about president's engagement in Brussels. They want to know in specific what is in need for Nigerians. How much can we get in terms of electricity better than what we are getting right now? Any specific in details that you can tell us tonight? Well, it is an ongoing uh, the issue of electricity is an ongoing concern. And as you can see that... Uh, uh, it's one of the priorities of the present administration under President Muhammadu Buhari. We have, for instance, the, the ongoing uh, program with the Siemens, authorized by the German government, which uh, hopefully was to raise power up to 7,500 megawatts by the end of the year or early next year, and then thereafter to 20,000 megawatts of distributed electricity. There are a lot of challenges that we face in this regard because we are able to generate a lot more power than hitherto. We are doing more than 13,000 megawatts, more than 13,000 power availability in the country. Problem is, how do you even distribute, how do you share that to our communities, to the factories, and so on? So. We are going backwards to see how there will be metering of homes, there will be distribution, you know, and the discourse are up and doing in getting a power supply to our homes. We are expecting that, uh, yes, the renewables are coming. The Europeans would be investing in Nigeria once they're assured of the right uh, investment climate, which, which, of course, is prevalent as we speak at the time, this time. 
What can you tell us tonight that should uh, probably would come out of that conference as perhaps the biggest um, benefit for Nigeria from the president's engagement? What should we be expecting as perhaps the biggest benefit out of that conference? Well, uh, you may have read uh, in today's edition of Politico, which uh, uh, published an opinion that the president has himself signed. And uh, really, the president is seeking for Nigeria and for the continent a fair trade deal with the Europeans, especially at a time when the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement is being implemented. Trade between our continents has been very unfair. The liberalization of trade between our two continents has been working in favor of the Europeans. And this has tended to stunt the growth of industrialization on our continent, and therefore the killing jobs. And this has been a factor in the migration of talented, well-trained Nigerians, whether they are doctors or engineers, you, you know, European, European uh, countries, against the many hazards across the deserts and the seas to go and find better living and the jobs to do there. So the president is calling, is inviting them, come and invest in our country so that even the headache that you suffer of migrants flooding your own countries and causing sometimes some problems eliminated because for us, as other African countries, everyone would like to stay home. And if there is work to do, you have no reason to say you want to leave your country and go to other place. Um, let's talk about, uh, we, we were speaking about what the president is doing in Belgium. Perhaps let's talk about what is expected to do in Nigeria. Before he left, we understand on the political scene that the president was supposed to have a meeting with, with uh, APC governors. And now what we are hearing within the APC rank is that uh, the, conf, uh, the party's convention is in the balance because of some of the decisions they're expecting the president to take um, decisive decisions about some very specific and crucial matters as relating to the convention. In fact, it was reported that the president had shunned the governors and uh, took off to Belgium. These are some of the stories that were reported locally here. But what is the true picture of things? Uh, the president was scheduled to meet with uh, the governors, but we understand that he did not do that meeting. What really happened before he left? No, I don't think it is fair for anyone to push uh, this onto, onto the president. Uh, the governors themselves have been working very hard behind the scenes, uh, uh, trying to construct uh, scenarios for leadership in the party. Uh, and the options are many, election or consensus or whatever. And, uh, on the day that the president was to leave, yes, he was set to meet them at midday. But uh, they, on their own request, asked that the meeting be postponed. Uh, unfortunately, three or so governors did not get notification of the cancellation of the meeting. So they turned up at the state house. They were not shunned by the president. They came. Those three that came, they still had uh, meetings with the president but it was not as if all of the APC governors had come and they were denied a meeting. So I believe that they are doing some housekeeping uh, uh, in the secretariat of the party and among themselves when they are ready and were hoping that this should be uh, so that this should be the case uh, by the weekend when the president returns and there will be a meeting. About uh, if you can tell us what did the president tell you, or what can you tell us tonight about the urgency of things? As far as I mean, because a lot of your party members are agitated already uh, because they are expecting the president to come back on Saturday for a, uh, a convention that is to hold on the 26th. 
And there are all rumors now that that date may not be sacrosanct any longer. There may be a shift in that date because nothing uh, basically has been announced in terms of the logistics and the preparations for it. Um, is the president aware of how crucial that some of the decisions they are expecting his reaction on are uh, for the convention and the urgency too? No, I don't think people should be should feel any pressure over this matter. Uh, uh, the, the election uh, can still be put together. All the delegates are known. And uh, what, what does it take? Uh, put up a venue and, uh, and accommodation and uh, have people come to, to the convention. I, I think that people are trying to create pressure around this when there is no need for it. And who knows? Maybe there are people who are keen on litigation. You know, in, in our country, you, you get uh, notice that uh, this is going to be done tomorrow or two days after the next thing is you hear somebody has gone to court and uh, comes out with the judgment or decision that says don't do this or don't do that i think that people have to be allowed to organize well uh, and the party is also entitled to, uh, to, to to a measure of privacy and safety in arriving at decisions uh, uh, on, on the way forward on this matter uh, we'll get it right, and uh, the party is in competent hands, and nobody should doubt the capacity and capability of the leaders, you know, to put a very sound and outstanding convention at the right time. Let me allow you to go, Mr. Gabashe. I must sincerely thank you for your time tonight. But I'm very sure that you're also following what is happening uh, in Nigeria and uh, some of the response and some of the reactions to what the president, the outfit of the president when he received the guest. Uh, part of the title is that trendy outfit that the president done when he had that meeting. I'm very sure you are aware of that. Is the president aware of that, uh, uh, those comments too? Yeah, of course, the president is keen, and uh, uh, for us, uh, what is most impressive here is that uh, people are beginning to appreciate that the president is in good health. And it was manifest from some of these uh, pictures that uh, came across, uh, and that should dispel whatever fears that some people, a lot of rumors concerning his health and all of that, generated by people of ill will, people who know nothing about these things. And we keep saying it, the president is much healthier than a lot of the young people who are attacking him on these matters. And uh, this continues to be proved by his outings, as we have seen in Belgium. But, uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the footwear, the, the top, and the, in fact, the trousers, a lot of comments uh, on how trendy the president could be on the shores, outside of the shores of the country. But it's good to uh, speak to you, Mr. Garbasho. I wish you the very best on, the, on that outing, and thank you so much for your time tonight. Let's take a break, everyone. And when we return, we take you to Oshun State and dig deeper into the crisis rocking the Oshun State PDP ahead of the Congresses and the Governorship Primary. Stay with us, everyone. My guests will be joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, and welcome back to the program. There is a strong division within the ranks of the People's Democratic Party in Austrian State, Southwest Nigeria, and this stems from the controversies over the party congresses and the procedures, and some unresolved issues over the governorship primaries and allegations of premeditated determination of the flag bearer or by the of the party by some governors in the PDP. There was a judgment from a court in Ileife yesterday over the leadership of the party, but that does not seem to have resolved or calmed nerves of some of the problems and crises that have been created. Some members of the People's Democratic Party in Oshun State have called on the National Working Committee of the party to reconstitute the electoral committee that will supervise the emergence of party's delegates for the next month primary election. They also want Governor Hafmed Fintiri of Adamawa State and uh, Governor Jayi Makinde of Oyo State to stay clear of the affairs of the party for peace to reign. Take a listen to their agitation. 
here to register our displeasure over the unnecessary interference in our party in Oso State by some PDP governor. They want to score to all our efforts since the 12 years ago we have been in opposition. We want, to, we want the whole world to know that we will not allow them to destroy this party for us. We have been struggling to go back into government since, since 12 years ago, but we won't allow any, any member, whether, whether, no matter how high a place, to destroy what we have been labor for for the past 12 years. Yesterday again, we saw all your state vehicles in good numbers in the hotel. We saw them in good numbers. They piloted those committee members to our shoe state. This is our shoe state, not our your state. We don't want him to interfere in our shoe state. And by the way, he is not the governor of Southwest. He is our your state governor. If you cannot, if you cannot say, you know, encourage peace in our shoe state, let them leave us alone. So that's not the uh, first protest that has been staged in Oshun State within the ranks of the PDP. We've seen uh, a few happen uh, in the past few days. Meanwhile, the crisis seems to have escalated outside of Oshun State as the River State Governor, Yin Sam Wiki, has advised members of the People's Democratic Party against making disparaging comments against governors elected on the platform of the party, warning that such comments will no longer be tolerated. Governor Wiki stated this in a reaction to comments by two chieftains of the party and some other comments being made about some of the issues raised in the party. Take a listen to River State Governor Yin Sam Wiki. Southwest, we have only one governor from Oyo State, and the governor said, Look, I don't even know what the party is doing in Mansour. And the governor said, Look, consult me. The governor is not saying, I want to impose anybody, but at least, at least, as the only governor we have in that zone. He said, let me be, be consulted too. If you can make me to head an election in North Central, why would it be that I will not be part of what is happening in my own home? The governor is not saying I must be consulted. And this is what I've always told people. Shei Makende, a young my gentleman, said, look, my colleagues are not consulted. And we're okay, don't worry. Let's see how we can put the house together. All you want to win is to win the equity and win the ocean. If Shayma Kende as governor has come to say, look, I want this governor, I want this candidate to be the one that won the election, some of us will tell him, but we don't think it is possible. See what we know, see what we don't know. But all the man is asking consultation. Because he's the only governor from that side was there. And you cannot with all due respect to anybody, to say he does not matter. I will not support that. Governor of River State, Hinson Weekend, making re uh, reactions to this. There will be Congress in the state in the next few days. Now, let me give you a, a, a brief background. There's been issues relating to the leadership of the party, which to an extent, it stemmed from uh, Soji Adagundo and the crisis rocking the PDP afterwards and what has happened right now, what the court said, and the decision of the court in Ileife, which is the recent uh, court order or the court judgment, and what it means for the party, because going into that delegate, uh, that Congress, it will also, that judgment will determine, the, those who will determine the delegates for that Congress, and the delegates will be the ones to determine the primary. So you see what, he, uh, what it means for the PDP in Austrian state. Uh, the delegates will be the ones to vote for the flag bearer of the Austrian PDP for the governorship election. So it means a lot to them. And the party has been largely divided um, along uh, faction, factional lines. Now, who does this favor? Some people will say he does not favor Senator Ademola Adeleke at the judgment of yesterday. Um, some will say no matter what happens, everything will, will be fine for the party. But in the interest of who is uh, all of this, let's get perspectives on this matter. And I'm being 
I'm being, I'm being joined on the program by Mr. Wally Ojo, one of the leaders of the party, and also Mr. Sunday Bisi. Both of them are of the different division of the party. Let's be with Mr. Wally Ojo. How does this come to you? I know the judgment from Ilefe favors you, uh, favors your group. But what does this mean? Why has this escalated to this point that things are now degenerated? Good evening. Uh, she, uh, talking about we seem to be having this issue. But uh, I guess uh, we will try some other time, probably get um, some of these uh, chieftains of the party here in the studio. But I told you some days ago that there was an interview I had with uh, the governor uh, Badaru about the state of affairs in the APC. I couldn't quite finish up to show you that interview, but let me try to see if you can get um, a full of that interview on the state of the nation, promises made by the APC, and whether or not they have fulfilled it. Take a listen to uh, Governor Badaru. The question a lot of people are asking again is whether or not you, you are optimistic that your party will not disintegrate after the President Buhari Senior. Uh, and the question, again, that you need to answer is whether or not your party has been able to live up to the expectation based on the promises you made at the campaign. Well, I, I assure you, given the circumstances, President Muhammad Buhari has done very, very well, given the circumstances. Without the proviso of circumstance, with, with, in the face with, of the performance, now, let me tell you would this. you say, based let, on the let, promises? The, the, he has done excellently well. First of all, the economic crash, we were making one third of what they were making. I look at the infrastructure that we well, have. Well, Governor, supported. some will say, look, no. uh, you met the, the, the economy and not as bad, but because of inaction, no, but, uh, but, I mean, those but, are allegations that you, yeah, but, but, because but, of but, inaction, but, but is, the government is, didn't take but, action, but, but, but and that's why but, the economy but, but is not, slipped. It's not an inaction. For six, she'll, over she'll, six she'll, months, she'll no me. cabinet members. She'll, she'll those are me. the she'll, she'll tell me. An economy that is run on, on uh, uh, 140 dollar a barrel oil per years together, and that price collapse within short time when we come in to around 30 or 28, is it? Before it gradually started picking up, and that economy has no reserve to take care of what is happening. What miracle? What miracle could have happened? Is Buhari? The person that causes that to happen? Will Buhari be happy with falling oil prices? Did he cause that? What were the fillers built by previous leaders when we were making money to absorb this shock if it's happened? Well, President Buhari and his team promised that they were going to fix it. And that's why they were elected. Yes. You said you were and, going and to get is, the job done. And that is why we get out of recession despite the terrible situation that is we are in. Let, that is why we do more infrastructure than what they did with the kind of money they get. But a lot of Nigerians are unemployed. Over 33% of them are out of jobs. If we, start, if we start telling you the job we've created, it has never been created before. But the figures say the, say the different thing. The and figures say different things because of the population growth. Well, I mean, could, could, because our population is growing about 4%. But the big question here, uh, Your Excellency, is that inflation figure is rising, uh, employment figure is rising. In fact, that's doubled compared to when you got into government. The issue of uh, food prices had gone astronomically higher. Price of common commodity like rice is crazy in the market today. No. Nigeria and it's an economy that is import dependent before we come in completely import dependent. And our source of financing income is in the sales of crude oil. We were selling crude oil at 100 to 140 per barrel. And we were using that dollar to import almost everything we need. Then suddenly prices crash. Our demand and test and import value did not fall. But the dollar revenue fall down. And we have no reserve to get dollar from to finance our import. What do you expect? With sharp decrease in dollar available for import, and without no reserve to fund import, dollar prices must go out. 
And if dollar goes out for an import-dependent economy, it's failing inflation. And no miracle will change that. Talk to all the economists in this world. So the Buhari government is the best thing that has happened to Nigeria? They have done well, given the circumstances. But could have done better? I don't think so. There is no miracle to change these things. Shall we tell me? You think no, listen, listen. If, if, if you are used to spending, giving your wife every day 200 naira, because you are earning 200 naira, and you are not saving, then suddenly you fall sick. You earn nothing, and you give her nothing, and you have no savings. What could have happened? This is the situation where you find yourself. We are spending so much without saving, and prices collapse. Is it because maybe you, your party sold to Nigerians that you were miracle workers, and you sold hope to Nigerians, and people are now expecting based on what you promised, yes, and but, you're not but, able to deliver but, based but, on but, the promises? But, but we did very well based on the promise. Who, 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 who expect oil prices to crash the way they crash? Who expect that? Nobody. Not even the world economy. We expect it to go. Read, read, read what they say. The projections. The but, question is but, that. But prices, what, what, have you prices done, what, what have you done to, to reverse the trend? As your that government, is, that, 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 is, that is what we do. The, 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 the first in history, 2021, we earn more, more in other incomes than oil income in 2021. For so many years, 30, 20, 40 years together, oil income is always higher than other incomes. But 2021, no. We earn more from other income than in oil. That is the trend. And we try to expand, never spy, and we try to do import substitution to reduce the volume of import, so we preserve the dollar, and look at our import, uh, export balance now non-oil export. It's increasing slowly, slowly, slowly. It's not something. And also, check out the import substitution that we do in all the ranges of products that President Mohammed Buhari supports the country to produce. Rice today, we are not importing. We save that foreign exchange. We are working on sugar, big time. We are actually working on, on wheat, big time, sesame, uh, all sort of cocoa, everywhere. We are improving, improving other export so that we will have a, a, a diversified economy. And that is what's supposed to be done before us. Listen, you see, Saudi, when the oil prices hit, they had to close to eight, seven, eight hundred billion in reserve. So it's easy for them. When they have shortfall of two billion in their import, they take from the reserve field and maintain their currency. We had not that luxury. Do you think that Nigerians understand what you're saying? In that, because they Robert do. Does, the elites so? do. The elites like you do, but you are not selling that to the people. No, you are the ones and, who and, sold. And, 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 and listen, is it the work and, and, of, and of, of the elites? It's the, 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 the elites, the but you see, class that, early, that sold early at, the, at the time of this it. government, Ekwanji uh, Awela, and I mentioned that, this is what is expected in the economy because she was worried that we should save and we refuse to save. Well, I mean, some people, and, will, blame, and, 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 some people will blame the governor's forum because it was the governor <laughs> at the time that said, what are we saving? Give us the money and let us spend. Well, that, that, you remember that, that, that scenario? That is, that, that, is, that is also so true. So we could blame the governors, isn't it? That, that is all true, but the leaders shouldn't have allowed also. And at that time, majority of the governors also are PDP. Mm. Uh -huh, so? so but the question now is that when you go to the... To the campaign 2023, how do, are you hoping to tell Nigerians, that, oh, we sold you this and we sold you this, we could not achieve this, but vote us again? She, do you think Nigerians she, will vote your she, party again? She, whatever you do with the fear of God and whatever you do sincerely, very well, God has his own way of showing the people the kind of character and what you have done and what you have sacrificed yourself to be. I'm sure who tell the people and they will understand the circumstances. If because I believe President Muhammad Buhari uh, run this government with the fear of God and run this government to the best of his ability. And he wakes, sleeps and wake up with the common man in his heart. How can he improve 
the life of the common man. That much I know. And because of that, people will see the sincerity in what we are doing and understand what we are doing. If people don't understand, because it is in the nature of voters not to be patient with government in power, and we've seen this happen. In France, it has happened. In America, it has happened. Even in the UK, it happens over and over again. People vote at government, not because the government is not doing well, but because uh, voters, in their nature, they are not patient. If Nigerians are not patient with your party and they vote out your party in 2023, how would you be, what would you say to that? It's, it's, it's their own choice. But Do you see this happening? No, I, do, I, do, I, I, don't, I don't see. I don't see. I don't see. I don't. I don't see this happening. Because, because the PDP because is saying the, they want to come back and rebuild this country. Rebuild that your party has destroyed where? this country. From from where? That your party we has destroyed this country. We inherited already a dead country. We resuscitated it. What, what are you saying? Shegu, you know the state of the economy when we come. For, for God's sake, 26 states were not paying salaries when we took over. 26. Even then, they were earning close to $80, $80 a barrel. 26 were not paying salaries. You don't think your party can lose this election? I don't think so. I don't think so. If it happens, because, what would you do? Because the, it will never happen. Because, because I know the people know what is happening, and they know the, 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 what PDP has done, and they will never vote PDP again. I tell you. Even if the lights of Atiku and, Abubakar and, run, and, 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 like and, and, and what I said is, they know with clear questions what we stand for. And they have the history of what transpired from 1999 to date. And they will vote us back to power because they know we are committed to their cause. Because if the lights of Atiku Abubakar and experience, but he's been a former vice president, you think your party can stand a chance in the in the in, in the shape of someone like Atiku Abubakar and the rest? Very much or so. Aminu Tambu, uh? Very much so. Your party will be able to. Certainly, certainly, Shell. All right. Thank you so much, Governor. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> Thank you very Such much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Governor Abubakar, about all the uh, conversation with him, just for you to have a sense of what I promised that. Uh, I will give you uh, a dose of that conversation with him. Uh, sadly, we're not able to continue our conversation with uh, the two gentlemen from Ocean State over the crisis rocking the PDP. But I promise that we'll try as much as possible to give you uh, insight into what is happening uh, at a later date. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. I'm sure Kimale. Bye for now. <laughs>